Welcome, my outside the box thinkers, to the Anti Aging Unraveled podcast, where I am your host, Dr. Lori Gerber. In this podcast, we will explore the fascinating world of personalized anti aging medicine that considers the whole person inside and out and how all systems are interconnected to each other. In today's world of modern medicine, we often find ourselves like just another number in a system that prioritizes quick fixes over sustainable and more natural solutions. Well, let's get ready for a paradigm shift in health and beauty. We look far beyond treating symptoms and aim to get to the root cause of our health and cosmetic issues. This podcast is your go-to source for all things natural, outside the box, and innovative in integrative medicine and cosmetic dermatology. So sit back, relax, and get ready to dive deep into the world of functional medicine and aesthetics with me, Dr. Lori Gerber. Let's take a trip down the real skin revolution pathway together. All right, guys. Well, welcome. I'm so glad to have you all back to Anti-Aging Unraveled. And it is me, Dr. Lori Gerber, bringing you another fabulous episode. You guys know that we're doing our basically our new year with guests. And my goal is to bring you people that intrigue me, people that inspire me, people that are meant to help you on your journey to wellness. And really, as we were just talking about a few minutes ago with my guest that's coming on, working as a community, as a team, which we don't do enough in this world. So I'm really happy and proud to bring on Madhu Das. And he is the incredible story, actually. I read it and was fascinated, but I, so I'm really excited to share this with you. But he's the CEO and founder of Madu Life, which is a conscious business and holistic coaching business, which I, you know, the business me, the people that listen to me regularly, I have that business minded heart as well as medicine. So honestly, I feel like there's room for both, even though physicians notoriously are terrible business owners. There's room, guys. There's room to help you. There's room to make money. There's room to get your brain in check, right? So we're going to talk a lot about mindset and lifestyle. His story is amazing. And he's an Ayurvedic therapist, professional musician, which we'll talk a little bit about, hopefully. Bhakti yoga, right? And Kirtan teacher. So I really am so proud, honored to have him on our show. So with that being said, Madhu, welcome. I'm so grateful to be here with you. And, you know, I always like to say how much I appreciate those like yourself who create these platforms for So many of us to get to come and actually learn real, some people call it alternative sciences, but I like to say real sciences. (laughs) Mm, Real. And and honestly, I think the the first sciences, if we really think about it, you know, I was just, I had a really great lecture about three weeks ago in Utah. And we talked a lot about the history of medicine and really the split between religion and medicine. And that was such a crucial time, right? Basically, world leaders decided whether they were going medical healer route or were we going the religious healing route. And that division really created this divisiveness, which truthfully should be back together, right? I mean, we think about the mind healing, spiritualness community. That division happened so long ago. Our goal is to bring it back together. So I'm really happy to have you. And I think I would love to start with just having you talk about a little bit about what you do. And then we'll get a little bit into what your story is and and how you ended up there. So how did you come up with your business? Let's start there. Madhu Das, I know I'm going to read your slogan because I love it. Master your mind, expand your wealth, and enhance your health. How does that all relate? And how did you get there? That's a a lot, right? Money, mind, and health and well-being. That's, That's a lot. Well, the easiest way to put it is it came from a lot of suffering and struggles to figure out how to put it together. I mean, the the long story short is I became a monk on my 18th birthday, which is not what most, you know, 18-year-old young men do, but moved to India, shaved my head, put on orange robes and lived in a monastery, in an ashram. And, you know, I uh, was not interested in the kind of typical lifestyle that most my age were getting into. I was like, I want to do the opposite. (laughs) So what happened is I learned all of these, yeah, what would be considered alternative practices of medicine, including Ayurveda, including um, different practices of yoga, not just the physical, but the actual metaphysical practice of yoga. For about half a decade, lived this monastic lifestyle, really just studying these ancient traditions. And then after graduating the monastery, I was like, what the heck do I do with my life? Like, how do I now integrate? Because the whole purpose of graduating from the monastery is to now, how do I give this information to others so they don't have to go shave their head and live in a monastery. Right. Does, does everyone graduate? Like, is that? Uh, 99% of okay. monks 
Yeah, student okay. monks become. Yeah, you know, there are there is, you know, we, we we jokingly say there's about a one percent where they're either really pure or really weird that they're become lifers. like life. Yeah, that are lifers. <laughs> it's like the military. Let's be truthful, guys. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. You got to be like really, like really pure or really strange, but and they'll become like lifelong celibate monks. But for most of us, yeah, we uh, at the time where your teachers are like, okay, it's it's time to graduate, to move on, and to integrate is really, really the term they use. And so I was like, how do I integrate this? And I did what most quote unquote healers or facilitators did in the holistic space, and just kind of suffered financially in the name of giving and sharing for a few years. Until I was like, this ain't working. And I also had my fights with um, autoimmune disease and different types of health issues that Mm -hmm. helped me go even deeper into the practice of Ayurveda. And so, again, I was sharing these tools, holistic health tools, but not supporting myself in any way, shape, or form. And eventually got to the point, I was like, this ain't going to work. I got to figure something else out. And that's when I took some time to bring in that third element, which is that we, in Sanskrit, we say dharma or that career, that purpose driven, that, that the way you bring money in. Cause I had the spiritual aspect there from being a monk. I had the holistic health there from the Ayurveda, but ain't no money. We were, I remember rationing zucchinis <laughs> just like, okay, this is my half for lunch. This is, and I've wow. like, got to figure something out. And so that's when I started to figure out how do I learn the art of money? And, you know, I mean, years later, having spent, wow, I don't know, well over $100,000 worth of courses, trainings, marketing, the whole thing. What I did is I learned what works and what doesn't work and grew a multi six figure, half seven figure business online through holistic wellness. And then about two and a half years ago, what happened was everyone I was talking to, all my friends in the holistic space were always like, how do you make money? I'm broke. <laughs> I was like, I know that feeling. That sucks. So I just wound up sharing what worked for me. And before I knew it, I just, it only made more sense that instead of helping one individual with their health, is now I can help others who are going to go help more. So you can only help whatever, 25, 30 at a time. Right. Now those 25, 30 will help another 25, 30. And, and so that's what then transitioned into the more business aspect of actually helping like wellness professionals and entrepreneurs grow their business as well. That's amazing. That's, first of all, it's just, be a teenager and go to the monastery. That's a whole another amazing, which I kind of want to dive into a little bit because I think it's really fun. However, so you're basically creating a team of people that are spreading this knowledge, right, to to everybody. And and yes, obviously we pay for this knowledge, but I think it's really important to understand that this is things that are not always intuitive, right? So clearing your mind is very difficult. These are things that you've accumulated and become... I guess, more acutely aware of, I can't meditate for anything I've tried. And it's just, I can do five, 10 minutes and that's about it to sit for, I don't know, what's the longest time you've had to meditate? A long time? Good amount of time. Yeah. <laughs> so I just think that, you know, people don't get that mental clarity they, and they don't, can't see sometimes outside the four walls, right? That's amazing. So can I just ask you about the book? What did the book There's a book that trains his life that his dad asked him to read. I think that's really fascinating. If I asked my son at 14, 14 to read a book and pay him $100, which is what happened, right? He paid you $100 to read a book. Yes. And that's what drove him into the monastery, essentially. What did it yeah. do? Like well, in your head, what did that do for you? You know, it was one of the best gifts my father ever gave me. What happened was I was studying philosophy and theology in school. I was always just kind of that weird okay. kid that was like, I was that weird kid that was like always into alternative stuff. I think it's kind of rebellious and skeptical and cynical. But my parents were into different aspects of spirituality, specifically Eastern spirituality. So because my parents did, I was like, have fun. That's weird. Get away from me. <laughs> friends would come and be like, oh, wow. Like we'd have cool like paintings and friends would be like, that's, I'm like, nah, don't worry about that. It's my parents thing. <laughs> so what happened was studying philosophy, theology, I would always have all these questions that were super unsatisfying answers would come to me. It was like, either stop asking so many questions or we don't have an answer. for. And I was like, oh, come on, there's got to be answers for these great questions of life. And so I remember my dad always be like, hey, buddy, I could, and I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And when I was 16, he said, listen, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you read this book called the Bhagavad Gita, one of the oldest written literatures we have in the world, or one of the oldest philosophies in the science of self and the science of yoga. Again, the philosophy of yoga as opposed to the physical asana mm-hmm. postural practice. And I was like, oh, fine, I could really use the money, become like a rich teenager, let's do it. And uh, I read it. And for the first time in my life, I went, oh, 
there's more than this like Western philosophy stuff they're teaching hmm. me here. There, you know, and, and what it does, it teaches the science of the self or what am I as a unit of consciousness? How do I actually find purpose in this life in the name of service? How do I actually contribute as opposed to just taking? How do I actually connect divinely? How do I actually change the quality of lives of others, et cetera? And in this way, it started to open my mind and I went, all right, fine. I'll, I'll read this weird Eastern stuff. And that's what got me inclined mm. and moving in this direction to eventually, when I was 17, I was actually, I would travel around to different like temples and, and like try, but no one would let me join because I was a minor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I was going to college and I was like, and, you know, it was, I liked my career pathway. It was occupational therapy, you know, which was funny. Of course, I want to become an Ayurvedic therapist. But anyway, it wasn't my calling. So on my 18th birthday, that's when I was like, wow. I'm going to dive deep into this. And I'm sure your parents were like, yes, we did Sur- it. Surprisingly, yeah. yeah. Most people yeah. Say, oh, was your parents okay with that? I was like, yeah, they're like my biggest support. Yeah, I'm I mean, sure. Every day I'd like FaceTime. That, well, even before Face, you know, I'd like call them. Call them. You know, whatever the case might be. And then eventually, you know, like Skype and then FaceTime and, you know, speak with them regularly. And yeah, the big, big fans. That's, that's great. I mean, listen, sometimes it takes a little push, you know, I'll, yeah. every parent, you know, you, you realize that you have to be a parent, not a friend. It's those moments, right? Mm-hmm. When you just try to impart that wisdom. So I'm going to ask this more for myself. I do, I do the physical yoga, but I curious, explain to me what Ayurvedic yoga is. How is that different? What does that mean? How do you bring that, I guess, to Western medicine, if you will, right? How do you bring it to people that maybe aren't thinking that way? Because I actually, I had to really look it up. I really wasn't very familiar. I mean, obviously hear the word, but not very familiar. So for our listeners, what is it? What do you do? How does it help them? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm a big fan of the physical yoga as well. You know, I've mm-hmm. got my 500 hour certification to teach it. Like <laughs> I'm a big fan, you know, do it still almost yeah. every single day. But uh when we complement that with the traditional philosophy of yoga, what we're primarily talking about is, and yoga is a Sanskrit word, which we still have the cognate in English, which is to yoke or to to connect, to link, to unite. And so there's different types of yoga-ing or, or connecting. And usually the connotation there is divine connection through a practice. So you have a physical asana yoga practice, which is ultimately to get the body comfortable to sit down. In the ancient yoga traditional literatures, the purpose of the physical movements was to be able to get in the seat. Actually, asana, for those of you who practice yoga, asana literally just means seat. That's mm-hmm. all the word means. And it means you do all these physical things so that you can actually sit down. And what do you do when you sit down? You meditate. So the idea being, as opposed to just focusing on the physical body, we also focus on the mental body, which is broken into the what's called the intellectual and the emotional mind. Or in Sanskrit, we have the manasa and the buddhi, which kind of similar to the subconscious and conscious mind for those of you aficionados out there. And then we also have the spiritual self or, or we just the unit of conscious, the you that drives around the biomechanical robot, AKA human body, the, the you that when you say, this is my hand, my hair, my eye, who is, who's the owner? We don't say I hand or I, I, right? When the body is changing, but the you that's driving around the body, that unit of conscious, that soul, that spirit, whatever terminology we give, we also want to nourish on that level. So we want to connect both mind, body, and soul. So this more holistic approach to medicine is that as opposed to just healing on a physical level, which you got to do, I mean, you know better than anyone, you know, you're expert in this idea of not just the physical, of course, but the importance of making sure that the physical body has everything it needs. But as important is taking care of the mind, because if the mind does not cooperate, who cares about health? If, if your mind is driving you crazy day and night, it's mm-hmm. like, You could be the fittest, least percent body fat, strongest sociopath in the world. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just, you know, it's just like life is miserable. So look at all these athletes, right? That have their own, you know, coaches for mental toughness or clarity. Yeah. And, you know, and because it's miserable, even the body can be great, but if the mind's challenging, it's like life becomes miserable and hard. And so in that same way, you know, so eloquently said, and so in that same way, we not only want to do the physical, we also do the mental, but then also spiritual health, which means connecting with the self on a regular and daily basis. And so really what that looks like is, and again, not just the exercise, which big fan, but going past that and doing daily exercises, both for the mind on an unconscious level, subconscious level, as well as on a conscious level. And then similarly, spiritual meditations for, well, let me say spiritual, literally just of the spirit. Is there anything that, and I'm going to look at a little bit into kind of what your programs are, but when you talk to 
a client? Is there something that you give them that they can do at home? Like a very simple, easy, like where's your starting point? Again, me, you know, it's like, all right, five minutes of meditation, I'm good. But is there somewhere that you say, here's an exercise that you can do to get you started? Because I would, I have a hard time shutting down, right? So for me, I don't get anxious. And my, my people that know me, they, I'm very even, but I'm always going, right? There's no shutdown. What do you give them to just kind of like say, all right, here's your first step? Because I'm sure there's a first kind of something they can take home. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, there's there's a couple like layers per se, depending on where someone's at. But yeah. in your situation, I, I don't think there's anyone in the world that couldn't say what you just said. You know, everyone. <laughs> so I mean, I, I remember sitting with a monk, you know, when I met him and they were like, yeah, you know, so this is what our morning looks like. We wake up about 3.34, do a little bit of group meditation that we do about two hours of private med- individual meditation. And I'm, I was thinking like, you're insane. That's not <laughs> even possible. I don't even believe you. Like, that's not even possible. And I just remember thinking like, this is not, this isn't going to happen. But the first step always is with a small bite. And what I like to suggest for people is if they haven't had success with meditation, it's probably because they haven't done the right meditation. And so the ancient yoga literatures, these ancient wisdom literatures from the East indicate that out of all the meditations that are there, there's one meditation, which is the most capturing for the mind. And that's called mantra meditation. Hmm. Mantra is a word we've even gotten into English now. Literally the Sanskrit breakdown, man is from manasa or the mind. And then tra means to free or to deliver. These mantras are sound vibrations that free the mind or deliver the mind. Most meditations that are out there, the reason it's so unsatisfying, it's like, okay, next, is because we're not actually grabbing the mind properly. An example might be, everyone here, I want everyone in three seconds, we're going to stop the functions of the mind. I want you to stop thinking. You ready? Three, two, one, go. And you're done. What happened there? The mind's (laughs) active by nature. No matter what you do, the mind is going to keep moving. Yeah. Or there's other meditations. It's like, let's become desireless. Okay, everyone become desireless. Count of three. One, two, three, go. And we're done because that's a desire. All these meditations, not all, many of them, they have a ceiling. So we're trying to control the mind like you're trying to grab a monkey and control. It's not going to work. You got to work with that monkey mind. So mantra meditation is you're giving these mantras so that the, the brain can grab something with the senses. Now, the sense of the senses, the ears, the auditory sense is the most grabbing, which is why we use an alarm clock to wake up in the morning as opposed to an oil diffuser. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because sound carries consciousness, you know, as I'm snapping, no matter what I say, the ears are going to grab, the attention is going to go towards the sound. If if an ambulance drives by, the sound is going to grab our attention, we have to keep pulling it back. So similarly, what we do is we engage the mind through mantras, which grab the mind, Everyone likes music. Everyone likes sound, a good sounds that is. And so we grab the mind and then we use that sound as the vehicle for mantras to go in. So we have a single pointed focus and attention. And then from there, they take it one step further to say these divine sounds or these sounds are divine. These divine sounds, they unlock the nature of the self. And what that really means is if we introspect enough, we're going to see our own true gifts, psychophysical nature in such a way that we're going to want to give and contribute and serve in this world. So by chanting these mantras, it is, they say it's the best form of meditation that's there. So what I, long answer short. No, it's a good answer. (laughs) We like it. Thank you. Is mantra meditation is the best place to start for most people. And what that looks like is taking one mantra. I mean, you can start with something so simple as OM, A-U-M, OM. Everyone's probably heard that to some extent or another, which is just a simple Three letter Sanskrit word that indicates that all three functions of reality, which is one unit of consciousness, two divinity, and three is matter around us. And so we say, Aum. And just by focusing the mind there, and you get a little stopwatch and you, you put a timer on for start with one minute. <laughs> and the next day you do 1.5, then two minutes. And like this, you slowly, you spend some time focusing on the sound because then you're working with the mind. You're giving the mind something to actually work with. Just like, you're, you know, as a mother, you know, if you just told the, your children, like, just figure it out, just sit down there and don't move. it. It's like, yeah, good luck. No, you got to give the child something to work with. So in the same way, give the mind something great to work with, especially some of these mantras, which you're going to feel a difference. What to speak of all the data they've now done to prove the physiological effects of mantra meditation. So 
I mean, I could go more into it, but that's, yeah. that's always the first step is some type of mantra meditation so that we can actually fall in love with the meditation to the point you don't even want to give it up. You're like, everyone, shut up. I'm locking the door. I've turned the lights off. Do not bug me for the next 20 minutes. I'm doing my meditation. I'm going to email you when that happens for me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll 100% be on board. We're going to do this. Speaking of the medical benefits, and, and it's proven, like I say to people all the time, there's very few things in this world that are proven to regulate cortisol levels, brain function, EEG waves, sleep. It goes all back to growth hormone, cortisol, stress response, meditation. If you can learn to clear that mind and de-stress, and if that's you know through, through meditation, through mantra, through however that is for you, we've used light therapies. We, there's a couple of really cool like red and blue light, but they, interestingly enough, they work through the ears and the eyes. So same scenario, we're doing wave therapy through the ears, believe it or not, to stimulate auricular patterns with the visual patterns. And it's proven. Like there's so much data and people just want to not believe it or not do it. And so I applaud you because I think one, I think a a young, as a young person, that's almost impossible to go and, and discover. So yes, you were probably a little different than most, but that's okay. We like different. I tell my son all the time, he's, He's very engaged in engineering and space. And, oh. you know, like you looked up religion, he looks up space. Yeah. But as long as you're passionate about something, the connections will fall into place, right? So you found your, you found your connection. So obviously you've been teaching for a long time now. So you've experienced a lot of teachers and now you're, you're a teacher, right? Of sorts. What makes you different? I read a lot of your reviews and I know you don't, probably don't want to toot your own horn, but The reviews are pretty fascinating. You do a way about you. I will tell everyone I'm looking at him and I'm talking to him. I know you guys can only hear him, but he has a great way about him. So what makes, what do you think makes you different? Why, why is you teaching this information different than somebody else? Well, first, thank you for your kind words. Yeah, absolutely. And I I can sincerely attribute this to having great teachers. Like, you know, what I've learned is because my teachers are just so kind and patient and (laughs) it took the time to bash these ideas in my thick skull. Well, I would say everyone has a unique style because Mm -hmm. we're all unique souls. And that means every single entity is unlike any other entity that's out there. What I focus on, which I think there's room for in the holistic healing space, there's more room for this, is a holistic approach from the most important areas of your life. We were talking about, there's like the financial component of supporting Mm -hmm. yourself. There's the actual health component. And then there's the spiritual component component, including also the mindset. There is also a third that we don't talk so much about, but it's relationships, but we also need those harmony. And really everything in your life is going to fall into one of those four categories of like relationships, health, spirituality, or career, dharma, purpose, et cetera. And and, and this term dharma literally just a Sanskrit term for the idea of you monetize something that is according to your nature. Anyway, what I'm a big believer in is if we focus on just one area and neglect the others, that uh, we're actually not going to feel contentment. Not necessarily happiness. I'm not so interested in just happiness because that's fleeting, uh, but rather a sense of fulfillment of self. That's that's where one, you know, as you know better than anyone, that's 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 where the true sense of a life worth living comes from. And so, if one is neglecting any of these areas of their life in the name of focusing on the others, there's going to be discord, you know, a lack of harmony. And so what I always like to focus on and what I've really spent now my whole life, (laughs) day in and day out, kind of gotten addicted to is studying these different categories from a very holistic perspective. Of course, you know, as a monk, there's a spirituality from studying Ayurveda the last over 10 years now, the holistic science there. These last six, seven years of finance, like actually learn money. It's just Mm -hmm. a thing to be learned. And then uh, with relationship, I've been with my wife now almost seven years and we did premarital counseling into still marital counseling for, since almost day one, because I'm a big believer in just find somebody who does something great and learn how to do it. You know, don't reinvent the wheel. And so what I've learned from these different practices, I try to offer people a synergy of them, as opposed to focusing on just one or the other, make sure that there's satisfaction and some type of cognitive and behavioral approaches to both of those that you can do sustainably over time that's ultimately going to bring you to your highest health, your highest spiritual values, your highest financial goals, your highest relationship goals, and creating the behaviors 
that one can commit to on a daily basis for each of these, that's going to provide someone a sense of success or a feeling of success. So that's that's the thing that I, I'm hoping, I'm expecting. There's lots of other people that are doing it, but I'm eager to see more people doing this. Yeah. And I've yet to found tons that focus on all of these areas. Well, and not many that have the experience that you have to be sure. able to provide so, you know, I've been doing this a long time in my world too. And, you know, when I first came out, I didn't have the experience that I do now, right? So when you have some time under your belt to be able to say, listen, I lived this, I lived this mismatch of balance and the balance, you know, not having the Dharma, right? Not having that that avenue. I think that's actually quite fascinating. Balance in in life and health is very important. And you learned that probably the hard way too, right? Because you had autoimmune oh, yeah. disease, right? So was it Ayurvedic? medicine that helped your autoimmunity primarily. 100%. So yep. what did you do and what did you see? I'm just curious because yeah. I mean, I work a lot with autoimmune disease, a lot of chronic inflammation, and we're working so much right now on brain with that and antibodies and shutting that response down. So kind of curious. I mean, it, to me, it just sounds, it sounds intuitive, but sure. you know, what did you do? Well, what happened was, you know, I was a monk and I didn't really have any health issues per se growing up. But, you know, when I became a monk and I traveled to India, I, I just pretty much ate the wrong thing one time. And as soon as I did, I was like, uh-oh, that was a mistake. And uh, mm-hmm. I got terrible parasitic infection. I didn't know what it was at the time. But what happened was, you know, because I'm just, even as a monk, I was still so cynical. I was like, oh, I got to go to a real doctor. <laughs> as opposed, I was like, oh, it's woo or it's quackery, whatever the case. Unfortunately, that was what was ingrained from my schooling and whatnot. I went to doctor and it was like, I don't know what's going wrong. I don't know what's going on with you. <laughs> you know? And what happened was long story short, I found Ayurvedic medicine. And not only did they diagnose me immediately, simply by reading my pulse, looking in my eyes, looking in my tongue and asking me a few questions. And they're like, oh, this, 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 and that. And by the way, did you know that your liver's hot because of that? And like, and the reason you struggle with this is because of that. And I'm just like, what? And I'm like, who told you about all that? There's no mm-hmm. possible way you could know that by looking in my eyes and my tongue and reading my pulse. And I was like, I totally didn't want to accept it. I was just like, There's, maybe this person's into cold reading. I don't know. But like, <laughs> and I, so I went to three Ayurvedic doctors and it was like almost the exact same experience. And I was just like, all right, there's something to this. So I started to rebuild my health from there. And then about two years later, I got Lyme disease. Mm, so, just so do I. Mm-hmm. The worst. Traveling up in the East Coast. And, you know, was, I didn't know I was at my friend's retreat center teaching, you know, teaching a yoga teacher training for them. And I was just walking around in my shorts, doing some meditation for a couple hours in the wilderness, not thinking I have to check myself or ticks. Got the bullseye, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that caused just a shl- I mean, the hardest health of my life. That's for yeah. sure. You know, and so what happens then, and it was right at the time as I graduated within a month after graduating the monastery. And so I was like, okay, the spiritual learning that's there. Like I feel strong. There's a strong foundation. I'm happy. So then I turned my attention really towards regenerative health through Ayurveda. And really it was just diet and lifestyle. I mean, there were herbal supports, but that's it. That's what you do. You you give the body all it needs to heal because that's its only job. Mm -hmm. And so the primary approach is there is correcting my diet, which really just means fix my digestion to start with, Mm -hmm. as well as change my lifestyle and routine in such a way as to actually nourish the body. And, you know, and and it it was very segmented in that way. It was like, okay, spirituality stuff, then got into the health stuff. And then soon after got introduced to my now wife and then like focus on the relationship stuff. And then you know, okay, I had the health, had the spiritual practice, the contentment, had the, have mm. the great wife and great teachers, great relationship with students, friends, et cetera, but like no money. And so then I learned the money. So it was, mm. it was just like one after the other, of like learning what to do. And uh, specifically for Ayurveda, the way I suggest for people always is you just give the body the information it needs to do its job best. Yeah. It always starts with diet and lifestyle. I mean, isn't it a shame that, has split. It's split so long. I mean, I don't even know what century Descartes was for 1700s, I suppose, but yeah, last um, couple hundred years. Yeah. So they made this transformation and made medicine totally separate from spirituality and well being. And honestly, I mean, I do a lot of work on cortisol resets and brain healing. And because autoimmune disease is, is there because your immune system can't handle the burden, right? So yeah. there's lots of reasons. Is it bug? Is it toxic exposure? Is it foods? 
sensitivities, but combination it, of all the above. <laughs> it all comes down to the yeah. same thing, right? It's lack of balance and lack of system being able to handle it. So I applaud number one, the fact that you finally <laughs> went to your Ayurvedic doctors and not going to a medical, regular medical practitioner, because you're right, they don't necessarily find it. But what I love is that they were able to tell you from your story and looking at you. For those of you, obviously, that don't realize we were talking about this briefly before we started. For me, history and the story that you tell me and writing a really, really thorough explanation of basically the life, the whole progression of beginning to end, how we ended up here is so important. And then I put the dots together, right? Because either where did you lose balance? Where did you get exposures? Where did you lose your way? And actually, that's how I figured out what I had going on too. I treat everybody else for so long. And then fast forward to me, I, you know, like Lyme, okay, I figured that out. And autoimmune disease, okay, I figured that out. But it took me so long to figure out the rest of it. I really had to sit down and do my own timeline and listen to my own body. So, you know, going back to looking in and your body telling you what's wrong, I wasn't listening. And I wasn't playing Dr. House or puzzle solver. I was, I was ignoring and going too far in one direction or the other. So for me, it was, I guess, business and money and relationship and not enough of inner health and spirituality and healing. So I love that. Absolutely love that. And it doesn't always need medicine. I 100% agree with you. A couple, maybe some herbs to support yeah. adrenal regulation and cortisol and, and gut for sure. Sometimes it needs some help with that healing, if, especially if you're not great at getting off of the inflammatory packaged sad American food diet, but really your immune system wants to behave and innately it wants to do what it's supposed to do. It's, we, it's trying so Yeah, hard, but we just make night. it crazy. So I yeah. love it. They, they um, have this term in Sanskrit called pragyaparad, which means the, the first place the disease situates in the body is called pragyaparad, which literally means neglect of the intellect. So neglecting oh, the that. body's intuition, that is always, according to the Ayurveda, there's always the first step of where disease starts to manifest in the body. That's going into my, that's going into my, I'm going to write that one down. I like that one. That's my book of quotes. I like that. That'll be yours. I like that one. All right. So let's do a little bit of success stories. We have a couple of different types of trainings that you offer. You do self-led. So there is an online kind of, I'm assuming, listen to you, kind of walk you through it type of course. You have retreats, which I'm I'm totally in for. Next retreat, I'm I'm there. And one-on-one -on -one coaching. So tell us a little bit about how they work. I would love to hear some success stories. I would love to hear kind of what your clients are seeing. I think the business part of it is fascinating. I truly 100% believe, guys, that when you have a vision for where you want your life to be, if that's not clear, you can't make money and you can't have... You will not have a business that's fulfilling. Because you don't know where you're going. So I'm, I would love to hear that from you. Yeah, I mean, amen. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm totally. Right. That's, Ooh, that's, yeah. That's, that's where I start with every single person is gaining a clarity of the destination they want to get to 100%. Yeah. Well, it, it's my, my program is very simple. I have a free group that I will help anyone who wants some help. And that's with their business. That's with their health. That's with their mindset. I don't, for whatever reason, for better or for worse, I don't help so much on the relationship and just for my own. I don't yet feel fully inspired to do that. But with the other three areas, that's where I feel very inclined to help. So I have a free community where I just give this stuff away for anyone who wants it. And then for people, there's two types of people that one person wants help with it and they want, they want somebody to kind of hold their hand and guide them through that. And for those people, we have a program where we get together, everyone's in a group and you know we meet up, we've got whatever 20 plus wellness professionals, entrepreneurs, and we support them in weekly coaching, both in group as well as in person. And, you know, it's really, there's just implementation. I like to just give away all of the tools or the practices because a lot of people will be able to just grab it and do it. And I'm like, hurrah, I didn't yeah. come up with this. I'm just sharing it from my great teachers. And so I just try to give, give. And then a lot of people want help with the integration. And pretty much I just wind up showing them exactly what I did to create, you know, a very successful business, how they can do it too. And a similar kind of process. And then of course the retreats that we've got one coming up in a two and a half months. We've got an India pilgrimage. It's actually the biggest group I've ever brought. 45 people kind wow. of scared. Like a little I used to do it for a living. It's it's a oh yeah. <laughs> I did group tours wow. for a long time. 
from my father. So have fun. <laughs> yeah, let's, it's, it's, it's bigger. You know, the biggest we ever done was like 33, whatever. And so I'm, let's see how that goes. But uh, big fan of retreats. And that's just, I, I'm a big believer of getting in person when we can. Most people I help, they're all over the place. But like, yeah. get together and, you know, do something. We've got go to Greece, Italy, wherever the case might be. And then other than that, it's, you know, those are just the three things that, I like to do. It's like, just give, help as many people as I can. Some of them, what happens, they come there. was like, you've helped me so much. Please give me, and please give me some money. That's like kind of how my business started. And uh, so I help those people implement. And then people who want a more in-person experience, we take them to cool places and do meditation in the morning, do some yoga, some exercise, eating some Ayurvedic meals, go do some, you know, anyway, sounds all, good. all the fun stuff. But that's it sounds amazing. simply what I do. You basically have taken your life plan or your life journey, I should say, and recreated it into a business. Like, exactly. honestly, that's pretty impressive. So if you had only had that that vision in the beginning, <laughs> right? And that's really what you're helping people realize though, right? Is that they need that vision. You need that yeah. and you need the balance. So I love it. And I'll definitely be taking advantage of your services. I think it's it's fascinating, number one. And number two, I that's definitely my lack of balance. I know that inherently, like that's, that's where I fail a lot of times is, is that healing and comfort. And my husband went overseas for three months at a time. So I'm balancing these, these struggles and juggles just like anybody. And he's my rock, my support system. So, and you don't have that, you need to find that somewhere else sometimes. So, and I do it too much where I turn to business and that's a problem, which is why we're on this podcast together, right? <laughs> but I do want to give you, I know we're actually up on time, but I want to give a quick little pop questions about you. So I like to do this, everybody. I do change my questions up from time to time. So I might change one of them up a little bit, but I do want to know your favorite movie or TV show. Ooh. Oh, these Ooh. are personal. Yeah, we're not going medical. We're not yeah. going, yeah, we're just yeah. going to go yeah. like, who you are know you? What I loved, I loved my my wife. I'm like so typically not into TV, but she got me into Breaking Bad years oh, ago. Oh, let wonderful. me tell you, that was just like, <laughs> yeah, I actually <laughs> I watched it. What did I? I watched it recently, a couple of years ago with my husband during yeah. COVID. Actually, during COVID, that's yeah. also when we. <laughs> yeah, it was fabulous. All right, so Breaking Bad. Do you have a movie that inspires you? Ooh, or musically, um, like I have a lot, bunch that I love musically because they're just so the soundtracks, like old school, are just so lovely. Like I love Almost Famous. That's kind of my like uh-huh. Kate Hudson, just kind of classic rock, coming of age, angsty. Sure, that's me. Sure. Oh, you know, I wonder what I would. Do. I would probably say for a favorite movie would be. I mean, this might sound really simple. I like the Avengers. I, okay. I watched like the Avengers a couple of years ago. Whichever I don't remember which one it was, but I remember thinking this is this is made really well. <laughs> I, <laughs> Listen, I, I'm, I'm such a lame person to ask this question to. Sorry, right. so if like, I ask you a yeah. book, you can probably give me a good book that you like. Got some books. Okay, yeah. give me give me a book. What's a book that you well, like? I'm biased, but I see the Bhagavad Gita is, is always. Always. I mean, I read it every single day, at least a chapter of the Gita every day. All right. Almost that's like I'm I'm going out and buying it. Amazon sales might, might just no, go up on that one. So okay. You'll send me your address and I'm, <laughs> I'm going to gift you one. Yeah. Sounds good. I'm in. I love to read it at night before I go to bed. And how about, I saw all your instruments. I'm, you play all of them, I'm assuming. Something so like what is your favorite? Ooh, you know, my favorite is the sitar. Oh, yes, yeah, so you can see you it in the back. See. You guys yeah, can't yeah. see it in his room, but it's pretty <laughs> freaking. And they're the coolest looking too, I have to say. Totally. Really cool. And totally. how about hobby that's not health related? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I would then say music. Music is okay. tends to be my go-to. But do you have a guilty pleasure? Something oh, yeah. that. How long do you got? No. <laughs> I. Um... You are from my area, so there's probably a lot of them, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I really enjoy, I would say like some form of mixed martial arts. Oh, you know, oh, that's just still like, healthy though. All right, whatever. fine. It's all right. All right. I'll just say eating my wife's desserts. That's probably my Okay, favorite. that's good. That's good. I was going <laughs> to say a cheesesteak, but you know, all right. I like that. All right, guys. So let me actually just pull up his website for you so you can go to Matu Life. So it's Life, right? To sign up for any of his programs. This is not necessarily just a hot plug, but I really think that we all should work together and really just be one big synergy in this world that we live in. It's also crazy right now, truthfully. There's enough money to go around. We should all be helping each other and figuring out how to best support, especially in our industry, and spread integrative health. I said before we started that I was known as the voodoo doctor for a really long time. I I graduated with this 
presidency and I was resident of the year and all these things. And everyone tried to recruit me into all these high specialties. And truthfully, I became a Botox doctor that likes integrative medicine. So I got sick with all kinds of stuff and it led me to here. So again, that vision is so important, but it's all about community and working together. So I'm really excited. I hope we can do some great things in the future. Yeah. Well, I want to give some appreciation to you. because That's fine. Go for it. <laughs> people <laughs> take it. don't threaten me with a good time. Um, you know, it. It's it's such a labor of love to put so much time and energy and effort into keeping a podcast like this going. And I just want to share for all of you that are taking your time to listen, to just send their gratitude and appreciation to you because it takes so much mental space and so it much does. attention and energy and so much work. And, and I'm just, I'm so grateful for those like yourself who are putting this time and energy and attention into allowing opportunities and knowledge like this to be readily accessible to anyone at any time. And just know that uh, I'm sincerely here to, my, my life is whole and complete by trying to serve someone like you who's impacting so many others' lives in such a positive way. And for all listeners, if, if there's anything I could do, it's sincerely and seriously my pleasure to help. And all anyone ever has to do is you just send me the word monk on any platform you can find Madu.life, like you mentioned, M-A-D-H-U.L-I-F-U. You just send me the word monk on any platform. We just give you access to our free group. Just have fun. My only requirement, you'll see this if you join, is anyone who does, you're obliged to have to share something with someone else. If you learn anything, that's my only value exchange that I ask for is you go Pay share it with someone else. Got yeah. you. We can do that. And thank you. I appreciate it. But you know, it's not that hard to talk. I'm a girl from the East Coast that likes to talk. So <laughs> it's it's very easy for me to just keep talking. So I really, but I really appreciate it. We're going to do great things. I know we're going to spread this information to so many people and I look forward to working with you in the future, guys. So tune in. We'll have our next podcast. Maybe we'll do some lives online and get some Instagram stuff going and hopefully try to bring you some more fun. We'll do some groups together. So thank you so much, guys. Tune into the next episode. 